Mike Martins can too. <laughs> Hey race fan, Brian Davis races and you can too. Today we are gonna take a look at Tour of America's Dairyland, final two laps for a couple of select races. As you know from the channel, I was unable to show up because I got sick right before the tour started. So I was able to give my camera to my teammate, Derek Hughes, and Derek was able to get some footage. So Derek is a super smart, super strong rider. So he's able to get us right into where we need to be in the final two laps. However, there's always some things we can learn. So we're gonna talk a lot about positioning in these clips, especially going into the final two laps. And I also wanna say, if you were thinking about signing up for Tour of America's Dairyland in 2023 and beyond, I can't tell you what a good idea that is. You will absolutely love it. If you're a Kurt racer, an amateur Kurt racer, this is the series that you wanna be in. The racing is fantastic. The courses are super fun. The atmosphere is absolutely electric. You will definitely not be disappointed. So one more thing about these clips, these set up because of the nature of masters racing, but they also apply to two threes, four fives, those lower categories because we're just not quite as fast or in shape as the pros. So if you're a pro watching this, skip it, move on to the next video. But if you're not a pro, you might be able to learn some things from these clips. And they're so much easier in video than they are in real life. But let's get into it. All right, race fam, let's go. Music to my ears, that beautiful start whistle from Tour of America's Dairyland. We are starting in West Dallas. I believe this was a really hot day. Uh, we're gonna jump to two laps to go, and there are, uh, I'm sorry, there's one rider up the, up the road, Barry, I believe, and he left with four laps to go, and he ends up sticking this for the win. So I believe the field is well aware that they are not going to be in contention for the win. However, everybody still obviously wants to do as well as they can in the podium. So here we are with uh, two to go, boop, 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 two to go. All right, saw that. Now uh, we're gonna see where Derek lands here. So he's in the top 15, 20 riders here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, plus the guy way up the road, 12, 13. So that's a pretty good spot because there's like 45 people in these races. So uh, nothing wrong with that spot where we're at right now. He's got a teammate right in front of him. You can see the uh, black and red kit and then gets uh, moved aside a little bit by that feller. Uh, which is fine. So This course has some technical turns. This is like a double back turn I did some an analysis on this course with a uh, cat 4 5 race and uh, if you want to catch that it's on the channel Just posted it a few weeks ago uh, Super nice of some of those racers to donate their footage to me So that was helpful because I was sick. I couldn't I couldn't race so there's some the, the right people you want to be around if you've had a chance to race with people in the uh, Tour of America's Dairyland Crit Series. Oh, okay, so I slowed this down because I want to take a look. This rider on the left is just coming off the front. He just did a massive pull. He's going to be tired. So now Derek makes a little bit of a mistake here by not understanding that that guy is going to be whipped. And uh, takes a long way around. And you can see by the time he gets back around here and rejoins, he's lost at least six spots, maybe five, six spots. So now we're pretty deep back with uh, going into the last lap here shortly. We're 15, 20, we're probably 20th place. Uh, and that's gonna be a tough hole to climb out of because the last lap gets really fast. Now I suffer from this. Like I'm not trying to like say I could have done this any better than Derek. In fact, I'm 100% sure I would have done worse than Derek because his, uh, he's much stronger than me. So it makes sense, right? All right, but we're gonna get a chance to reprieve. And this is what I was talking about in the intro clip is in the Masters 4-5 races, obviously uh, often, and often as well in the four fives, two threes, you're gonna get this this little moment here where things are gonna slow up, mushroom out, because nobody wants to really take on the last lap unless there's this, uh, a team with multiple teammates and their plan is to lead out the last lap for a sprinter. But that's pretty rare in four fives, two threes, and, and uh, in the Masters categories as well. So this would have been a good chance for, as the field rests, that would have been a good chance for Derek to jump ahead, maybe even put his nose in the wind and be in the top four or five riders going into the last lap. It's a long way to go still, so you, you certainly don't want to start popping off a sprint yet. But it's all about positioning, setting up for that sprint. And we're going to have one more opportunity that would have been a good wheel to catch on. So you can see he lets himself uh, fall back in behind this little group, which is tempting, you know, because you're so tired and your heart rate's jacked and there's turns coming up. So it's hard to be super aggressive. There's not enough room to pass here. So you're stuck on these two turns. There's really nowhere to go. But this straightaway uh, setting up before the final turn is really where some critical things are going to happen. Again, you're going to see some weirdness. This would have been a good time to catch that wheel right there. And he's petered out early, but if he would have been on that wheel, he could have gone around early. Bart is an excellent sprinter. You can see Bart move up into a great spot. 
cuts that turn inside. It's willing to put down a little at Watts to keep his position. Now we're going to watch Bart. Bart um, is two, two wheels up now on the left. He's Watch what he does here coming up shortly. Derek's going to get swallowed up by this uh, by a rough turn here. So now we're really far back to be contending a sprint, mostly because of those two turns that just didn't quite go right. Uh, and you see Bart just jumps ahead. He gets behind, uh, gets ahead of that rider that was slowing up. You can see this white brother rider slowing up, taking up some space in the turn, and kind of trying to mess up some rhythms behind it. So I think he's setting up his brother for uh, a sprint, which is fine. So uh, recognizing how those people are going to switch places uh, can be really important. So hard race, definitely a hard race. There's some times where we were just sitting around lollygagging, but man, I'm glad that's over. Well, Syracuse races, you can too. Hey, riders ready. Masters. All right, uh, here we go. We are at Downers, an iconic course for Tour of America's Dairyland and Wisconsin cycling in general. So like Derek said in the last race, uh, you know, it was hard. It was hot that day. This race is going to be much cooler. It's still really humid out, but uh, obviously it's been raining long enough that you don't have to worry a ton about the pavement having grease and oil on it, but the painted surfaces are, are certainly tricky, right? So um, what I wanted to say, just to clarify that last clip, is that uh, there was a couple riders moving up. That would have been a good wheel to catch. There's, it's just the awareness of knowing who's leading out and who is going to be coming back and understanding what that role is and how that's gonna affect you if you're trying to get around them in these final turns. So anyway, here we go with two to go. Derek's in a good spot. You can see he's in, uh, there's Bart, the sprinter on the left, and he's got Sharon, uh, sprinter on the right. One of the White Brothers is with him. So he's in a good spot for positioning. He's still with the heavy hitters. Uh, there you seem to be okay with where they're at. They're gonna start moving up here, you're gonna see. Now this course, this is the long straightaway on the back. There's plenty of room to move up, but you gotta definitely put out some effort to do so. And it's real easy to get pinched into the curb on the left because everybody's gonna wanna swing to the left for these turns. That's kind of the nature of this course. There's just hard lefts, uh, I'm sorry, hard rights. So everybody wants to be on the right, or <laughs> everybody wants to be on the left, left, left. Uh, right into the curb. So you just got to be aware of that and again understanding where you're at in relation to other people And I think in the, what I've learned from racing this course is in those last two laps Like if somebody passes you that should be your red alert No one should be passing you in the final two laps You should always be trying to gobble up spaces because right now Derek is is too far back there uh, Even with one to go. He's gonna move up here. Nice work. Good job Derek So he's getting himself into a great position actually this is perfect. I'd slot in right here behind Sharon if I could, and he does. Well done. Yeah, that's perfect. This is the perfect spot for one lap to go. You know, I think that ABD rider is probably in a position where he's going to have to work for a teammate to set up a sprint. There's Bart. Uh, we let Bart get in front of us. That's okay. That's a good wheel to be. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not Bart. Uh, we let that wheel get in front of us, which is a good spot to be. He's wearing the leader's jersey, so obviously a decent wheel to be on. There's Bart on the left. So, okay, we're still in a decent spot. Um, but I think Derek would agree that once these riders start passing, that was a white brother coming along the side, another rider coming up to pass. Now, we're in a tough spot here because we're going to want to slam left to go right. And we're kind of hanging on the inside here so we're gonna have to put out some power when we come out of this turn which is gonna rob us of some strength when we hit the uh, the final bend here and you're gonna watch I guarantee you're gonna watch Derek's sprint to catch back up to speed now if this rider on the right would have been on it uh, and shot up the right hand side that would have been a great wheel to be on but see we're just letting riders come around us and that's that's not a good spot we got we got to maintain that position or even tr be thinking about gaining position so this is going to be a tough finish i don't uh I don't, I don't remember actually how this turns out so we're watching this together friends but we're letting way too many people pass this year and i'm sure derek would agree with that but it is what it is you know like i said before in the intro it's much easier to have these conversations when you're watching video and not understanding how slippery the roads are how hot it is how tired you are already manhole covers like yeah, none of that's crossing your mind when you're watching this video, but all those things are very real when you're out there racing. So we're pretty far back. It's going to be hard to get a good finish here. Uh, Derek is a good sprinter, so we're going to have uh, we're going to be able to pass some folks. But yeah, we just set up for the finish just way too far back. Uh, yep, there we go. So 
Sharon ended up taking that one. So he was on the right wheel, totally just didn't stay there fun. long. Enough. It was a fast, fun race. And uh, I don't know, stayed upright, got ninth place. Moved up one place too in the uh, Omnium overall. And I'm so cold, cold and wet. I want to show I want to actually call out Derek because those those average watts that he's putting out are insane so be sure to check out those uh, training peaks summaries and his max watt like the first day where he said he was taking it easy a 1494 max watt like well, that's not so easy all right this is my favorite course of the whole series is a new course last year absolutely fell in love with it it is so fun it's technical it's tricky but it's fast and it's flowy like I don't know how it does all those things but it certainly does so here we are tucked in behind our teammate Dan uh, in the Stars and Stripes bands for uh, mountain bike single speed world championship, I believe, or, or uh, US championship. Uh, and you can see there's Bart again. And Bart's a 50 plus rider and we're doing the 40 plus category, but Bart's a heck of a sprinter. So if you can figure out how to get on Bart's wheel going into some of these sprints, you are in a good spot, my friend. All right, so we're gonna be uh, coming through this, uh, the, the roller coaster part of the course here, super fun section. And, uh, coming out of this there's really not much you can do to pass it's pretty single file through this turn you can maybe carry two people in some of the lower laps or, or earlier laps but coming into two to go you're going to be going so fast it's going to be hard to imagine two riders coming together so i'm going to speed it up a little bit so we can get around with one to go uh, and we're in a decent spot i think derek would agree uh, now off the front of this race is Jaden yeager he went off with like in the first lap so He's and he lapped the field by himself. Just absolutely crusher performance from Jaden. So we are racing for best of the rest here. Uh, with one to go, you can see some people on the last day of the series. One to go, last race. Like there's some people taking some chances with one to go. It's getting a little uh, getting a little itchy here in the front. And we're slowing down, and that's always dangerous with one to go. But you see this trend, right? Like I talked about before in one of the earlier races, one to go, things slow down. That might be your opportunity if you're tail gunning to just kind of have to wait for that and then commit. Like this last lap's gonna be super hard. I'm gonna have to sprint from a bad position to a good position. As soon as I see it mushroom out, I go, I grab a good spot, and I hang on for dear life till we're done. Maybe I don't win that way, but it's a heck of a way to get yourself a top 10 finish. All right, so this turn is super technical. It's a tough spot. Derek uh, takes some risk being on the outside, but uh, the reward for the risk is the speed. And uh, now we're in a decent decent stat, spot, pretty far back. Dan, the teammate, is gonna try his best to get Derek up to the front, but there's just some traffic here going up this hill. After, after 30 times up this hill, it's tough to, uh, to find the space and the leg strength in your legs to be able to just power through this whole field at that point. And then this is the roller coaster section, and then you have two pretty decent straightaways to be able to try to get to get yourself around some folks so uh, unfortunately we we're just too far back to be contending our field sprint here and uh, Derek had some awesome finishes we just had some technical difficulties with the uh, the cameras on a couple of those days so I don't have his best finishes but rest assured he did really really well in this uh, in this whole series and Dan and John did a great job and uh, yeah it's just super fun man you guys should totally sign up it's great even if you're not out there winning races it's such an awesome atmosphere the speeds are fast. The racing is fun. Everybody's like on the same wavelength after day two or three. Everybody comes friends and talks after the race. It's just such a great community to uh, to be a part of with cycling. So, all right, we're pretty far back, but this is a pretty far, pretty long sprint. So we're going to see Derek on cork here. There's Dan. Dan's not able to give us a lead out, but Derek's going to go catch a couple folks. So let's see how he does. Sharon is just up the road, but his teammate already won for the day. Jaden and Sharon are on the same team. Derek's doing a great job of passing some uh, some folks here and just doing batting some cleanup here to uh, see what we can do to pull out a decent finish out of this out of this last day of the race. And I know he was uh, pretty tired on this day, but look at that. I mean, that's still a really solid. That's a long way to go to catch some spots there at the end. So well done, Tour of America's Dairyland. Well done, Derek. Thank All right, we're gonna take a look at one more finish. This is not two to go, this is actually less than one to go. We're coming around to the start uh, start finish straight away here on uh, day four of racing. So this was, uh, sh oh, I forget which, which course, but 
uh, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a tough break here and there's just not a lot you can do this is just crit racing right I don't know positioning wise what else you could do um, so Chad Hartley right in front of the wheel in front of us followed by Sharon ahead of him we're in a good spot a little a little chit chat going on about positioning everybody's racing fine no issues here what you're gonna see here is like when you give up the wheel by just a few inches that's enough for somebody else to get their handlebars in there and once they're in there they're in there you're not gonna be able to take it back you're not going to be able to force the issue from from behind and you can see the rider in front of Derek is not reacting to the fact quickly enough that Chad is taking that wheel and inevitable results and I'm not even blaming that rider it's just kind of what happens it's racing it's the last lap just some of the chaos that occurs but it's unfortunate so thanks for watching everybody please smash the subscribe button if you have any commentary down below let us know what uh, what Derek could have done better in your opinion too we'd love to hear from you and now this is really cool. This is our teammate, John Lester, pulled up. He was in the back of the field. He saw Derek crashed, came to a complete stop. Derek, are you okay? Like, you know, that's just cool, Human, the human side of cycling. And then uh, John's going to just be like, hey, man, grab my bike, finish the race. I'll walk it back. Don't worry. Because Derek was in contention for Omnium, so maybe he could finish this and maybe get a point. He actually did get a point uh, as a result of this. So John's like 18 inches taller than Derek, though, so... You take what you can get. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Appreciate no, it. Smash that like button. Leave a comment down below and please subscribe. Yeah.